in this chapter, probably the concept that's the toughest to understand is alternation of generations. And the past couple of days, you studied mosses and you studied ferns and you've done coloring sheets trying to help you understand the difference between these two. Um, alternation of generations, no matter which plant you're talking about, is basically the same process. So on the board behind me, I've put a diagram that summarizes alternation of generations, no matter which plant you're talking about. Now to understand this, you have to go back and remember what we talked about in module seven. The first concept there that you need to pull up in your brain is the concept of diploid and haploid. Diploid is when you have two copies of the chromosomes in the cells. Haploid is when you have just one copy of the chromosomes in the cells. And we discussed in module seven the difference between mitosis and meiosis. And we talked about how mitosis is a process by which um, the cell makes exact duplicates of itself. So if you start with a diploid cell and it undergoes mitosis, you're going to end up with a diploid cell. If you start with a haploid cell and the cell undergoes mitosis, you will end up with a haploid cell. Now we said that both diploid and haploid cells could do that, but in the examples we used when we were learning about mitosis, we kind of conveniently ignored the fact that haploid cells can do that as well. They do, but we were trying to simplify things at that point so you could get your head around the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Meiosis is going to happen when you start with a diploid cell and you end up with a haploid cell. So the mitosis can happen in either diploid or haploid as long as you realize that the result that you're going to have is the same as what you started with. Now, if you look at alternation of generations, um, I think probably it's a circle, so it doesn't really matter where I start, but I'm gonna to choose to start over here with the spores. Spores are haploid, which means that they have just one copy of the chromosomes. The spores are gonna undergo mitosis, which means they will make more haploid cells. And as those reproduce and grow and make more and more, um, you end up with a gametophyte generation. The gametophyte generation has all haploid cells in it. Because these cells are already haploid, those cells also produce sperm cells and egg cells, which as you hopefully will remember, those are also haploid. The sperm and the egg are then going to unite to make a zygote, but because they each have only half the number of chromosomes to start with, once they combine, you're going to have a diploid cell with um, a 2N or twice the number of chromosomes. The zygote then reproduces by mitosis, making more diploid cells, and then that ends up with the sporophyte generation. And the sporophyte generation um, continues to reproduce. At some point, it undergoes meiosis, which is going to take you from a diploid back down to a haploid cell when it produces the spores. Now, again, this is a cycle, so it doesn't really matter where you jump into it because the cycle is continuous. In ferns, as you're walking through the woods and you see the ferns growing by the side of the hiking trail that you're walking on, what you're seeing is the sporophyte generation and all the cells in that fern are, are diploid. In the mosses, as you're walking along and you're maybe you're walking over mosses or you find a nice mossy place to sit because moss tends to be comfortable to sit on as long as it's not too wet those are haploid and that's what you normally see in mosses both mosses and ferns go through the other generation in order to as part of their normal life cycle in order to reproduce but it's just that they're they're dominant in mosses in the gametophyte generation and the sporophyte generation is dominant in the ferns so what i have done is I sent you another file where I took the coloring sheets that you've already done and I've imposed this circular diagram on the coloring sheet. I'll hold it up here so you can see it, but I'm not, I don't expect you to try to copy this off the video. That would be not very efficient. So I did that for your moss coloring sheet and I did that for your fern coloring sheet. You don't necessarily want to print them out because it will actually be better if you look at the diagram and then copy it yourself onto your own coloring sheet. So as you're studying this, just keep in mind, it's the same process in both types of plants. And in fact, um, your author of, the, of your textbook will tell you that many botanists believe that all plants go through this. It's not just ferns and mosses, but that all plants have both a gametophyte and a sporophyte generation. 
So the process is the same in both. It's just that what we see in the plants um, as their dominant generation can vary from one plant to another.